This is the ATEM Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. Their latest ATEM switcher model hit the market and it was only just announced last week. So I got this today, very hot off the press and I thought what better time than to make a video overview run through of it for you guys than now. Now before I do that, if you have any questions about this model, which I'm sure quite a lot of you out there already have, then do pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if I don't know the answer, then I will do my best to try and test it and find it out for you. Cause look, I obviously have this in my hands right now. If you're not too sure what this is about, then this video obviously is gonna be for you. But in essence, it is their new ATEM switcher model, builds on the success of the ATEM Mini, but it adds in a nutshell, recording capabilities, live streaming, and of course it has the all important multi-viewer built straight into it. So let's get to it. This is what you need to know. The body is pretty much identical to that of the ATEM Mini, with the addition of a few extra buttons on the top control panel. More on that to come later. There are four HDMI inputs on the back, since this is a four channel HD mixer, each supporting up to 1080p at 60 frames a second. There's a single configurable HDMI output, a USB-C connection, Ethernet port, two stereo 3.5mm jack audio inputs, and a locking DC power connector. Okay, so now that I'm all plugged in, of course the first thing I'm going to notice as soon as I turn this on and plug it in, is that I've actually got that multi-viewer. Now I've got mine being displayed just on this Blackmagic Video Assist. Uh, to the side off screen here. Now that is pretty small to be honest, but I'm more using it just so I can do a local recording and show you what that multi-viewer looks like. So on the screen, on this multi-viewer, much like all the other A10 multi-viewers, it is completely configurable. You can change the labels, bring up audio meters, but the, in essence, the whole idea is that you have everything in the one place. Now we've got all the cameras at the top row there, camera one, two, three, and four. I'm just using the two cameras in this setup. And then as I cut between each one, at the moment I'm previewing camera two, we'll turn that live, and you see on program that switches over and vice versa. We've also got a media player, so we can load in graphics, still images, and bring that in. And what's pretty unique with this A10 multiviewer is that the other three windows we have at the bottom there are dedicated to giving you a status update on your recording, your live stream, and of course, all of your audio meters. So really this whole thing has been designed so that you can see everything in the one place very clearly. Now on this ATEM, there is only the one HDMI output. And like I've said, it is fully configurable. It works in the same way as an AUX out. So you just set what you want that to output. And that's where the multi-viewer is sort of incorporated. It sits within that AUX. So on the right hand side here, where we've got a few of these new additional buttons, that's where we control from the control panel on the top there, what we want to output. At the moment we're outputting our multi-viewer, so that's how you can see my arms flailing around and all my different shots, etc. We can change that to program. If we just want to monitor our program feed like so, as I cut from camera to camera, this will cut. And then of course we can show our individual cameras. Now much like the A10 Mini, the A10 Pro also has a USB-C port. And if you connect a computer to that USB-C port, this A10 will basically show up as if it was a webcam. And if you go into Facebook or YouTube, whatever program you want to use, where you'd normally have your webcam showing up to go live, you basically go in the drop down, and instead of picking your built-in webcam, you change it to the ATEM. We can actually use that USB-C port now to record directly from the ATEM Mini Pro onto the likes of USB thumb drives, old school spinning disk drives, or even SSD drives. Now, of course, I've got my SSD drive here. If I just uh, plug this cable in, let me get to the back so I can show you. If we plug it in, I'll just go to the front and you can see this light here where it says disc has just lit up. And of course, right from this control panel, I've not looked at anything else. I can just hit record. And now we are recording to my SSD drive, We're recording our program out. And that's incredibly powerful considering, you know, you could just go straight to a USB drive or a very small SSD drive and have your full show recorded. And of course, in the software control panel, you can also see the drives that we're using and the status of them. So obviously it's great that we can record our show using that USB-C port, but how do we go about actually streaming? Now, like I said, this has a built-in hardware encoder for streaming. So the ethernet port is how I'm connected currently to my MacBook Pro just off to the side here. Now that ethernet port, the one connection gives me two things. One, it allows me to use the software control panel that I'm running 
on my MacBook Pro so that I can control all of the settings of this from my MacBook. Two, it actually supplies an internet connection from my MacBook to the A10 Mini Pro. Now on the streaming tab within the software control panel, that's where you'll basically have all of the controls for setting up that direct stream from the A10 Mini Pro to whichever platform you'll use. Now if I just go to that, and you'll see on the top right we've got live stream. If I just click on that, and then on the platform we've got YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook as presets already in there, makes it a bit easier for you. So if I just leave it on YouTube, uh, keep my server as primary, all we now need is the stream key. Now to get that information, you simply just go onto the website that you're using, like YouTube or Twitter, and then set up a live stream. And when you set up a live stream, you'll basically be given the stream URL and a stream key. And of course, we just need to copy and paste the stream key into that field Decide on the stream quality that we want to stream at. Now, of course, this is gonna be dependent on how good your internet speed is. Um, mine should be okay, so I'm gonna go for streaming high. Once that's in there, we click on air. And of course, we can now see that we are streaming live. We've got confirmation on our multi-viewer that it's streaming. We can, of course, go on YouTube and we can see that we are getting a video feed. So that's perfect, we are live. Now, of course, if you wanna stream to the likes of other platforms that aren't in that list. I know I'm very aware there's only three in there. Um, the way you would do that is there is a way to edit the XML document uh, that sits within the ATEM Mini Pro that houses all of the stream presets. Uh, you can open that XML document and input your own customized uh, presets within there. An update for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K was announced. And this update brings along some really impressive features for when you're using those cameras with either the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Pro. And essentially what it allows you to do is to have remote control over your cameras from the A10 Mini Pro just using that one HDMI cable. So I've actually got the 4K right next to me here and a 6K over there. These are the two cameras that I'm using uh, going into this A10. And as I take camera one live, we get a tally light. You get a red tally light for the camera that's live, green for when it's on preview, and then obviously blank if it's not queued up at all. It's incredibly powerful because just the tally light alone is such a confidence booster for a camera operator if you're using them, but also for your presenter to know which cameras are live. If you've got a few cameras going on, you know, they can easily see which one's live and obviously present to that one. So that's very, very cool to have. The second cool feature, of course, is that we now have full integration in the camera control panel of the remote controls for the camera. What it allows me to do, in essence, is control all of the camera settings, you know, your ISO, your shutter speed, the gain, the white balance. I can also adjust the iris and the focus when I'm using the still base lenses, because obviously they're electronic, they're active. What's really cool is if you stick a servo lens on there, and I've got a little one, a little micro four thirds one that'll work with this 4K, I can even control the zoom all remotely from the software control panel. So, you know, if you're using a few of these cameras, maybe you've even got them already for creative filmmaking and you're looking at this really to, to step you into the world of being able to offer live streaming, then as a sort of complete package, you know, you can operate all those cameras, all that gear, you know, just from this one device and a computer. It's incredibly powerful, impressive. We now also have the ability of triggering a local record on all of the pocket cinema cameras that we have connected to the A10 Mini Pro. Now, of course, this is only gonna work with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras um, in terms of doing that local record, but it's very cool that we have that ability now. So what I can essentially do is I can do my live show and you know it goes out, it gets streamed, and with any sort of stream show, you know there's gonna be lots of compression going on. But if I want sort of a full master version that I can really push and pull and work with in post and really make it look good, then having these local recordings on your camera is gonna be invaluable. So of course you could do that with any camera, but what's very unique with this setup using these cameras is that one, it will do that remote trigger, record all at the same time across all the cameras connected, 
But two, this also now has time code built in. So essentially, I can just feed in the time code from my A10 Mini and that will go to all the cameras. So when it comes to the end of my show and you know I'm getting all this media off these cameras and pouring it into Resolve, I can simply sync them all by time code and bam, everything is now back in sync and I can start chopping away. The A10 Mini Pro uses the Fairlight audio engine. It's the same audio engine that is used in the flagship Constellation 8K Atom, which of course is a lot more expensive than this one. But it's their sort of revamped new audio engine that they're sort of putting in pretty much every new ATEM that they bring out now. And it is very powerful. You've got EQ controls and dynamic processing in there. So you do have, you know, professional audio control within the software control panel. On the surface panel at the front here, we just have simple controls for turning audio feeds on and off per video channel. And of course, per video channel, we have stereo. So two audio channels embedded into each video feed and we can turn them on and off. We can also tell it to basically, as I cut around different cameras, I want the audio to follow which video I'm showing on. Other than that, you've got some basic volume controls. And actually what's kind of nice is with the multi-viewer, um, now before we had that, these audio controls, if you weren't looking at your software control panel, you'd have no idea what level you're actually setting uh, these at because they're just an up and down button. But now with the multi-viewer and with the ability of overlaying all of the audio channels uh, onto each video source and also having your master audio channel shown there in the bottom right with all of them, uh, we can easily see, you know, as I'm making adjustments, I can see if levels are going up or going down and really just see if they are, if they're healthy. Both the A10 Mini models have a built-in media clip player, which can handle a single still image. So it's not really for video playing, it's more just for, you know, a still frame, a very simple graphic really. Typically you're gonna use it for a holding slide before or after your live, and maybe even name straps. Now the other buttons just on this bottom area here are for your built-in transitions. Uh, you do have a few to choose from, um, you've got different mixes, wipes, squeezes, things like that. I'm gonna be completely honest, I tend to just stick with uh, a hard cut or a cross dissolve. But you know, it's nice to have these things built in. You also have a little bit of control as well over to the duration. Of course, you can tweak these settings in the software control panel and have a bit more control over them there. But that's still great to have. The real feature when we talk about effects uh, with the A10 Mini Pro is that you've got an upstream and a downstream keyer. Essentially what that allows you to do is green screen work uh, and also picture in picture. Uh, and picture in picture, at the top you can see we've got some other buttons there. Essentially we can have one video source overlaid onto another, you know, in a small, a small box. That's why it's called picture in picture. Um, I would say if you're gonna be using that, set it up first in the software control panel because you can really then actually fine tune whereabouts you want it, how big you want it, you know, borders, backgrounds and actually what your uh, video source that is going to be overlaid is going to be. So I hope you found this run through useful guys. The only other thing that I would say just to, to round it off is that Blackmagic are very good at making an ecosystem when it comes to their live products uh, and it's no different with the A10 Mini Pro. Uh, because of that network connection there's no reason that I couldn't upscale my production and add, you know, the ATEM advanced control panel, uh, the camera control panel, uh, have multiple laptops hooked up to it, uh, all running the software control panel, but on different pages. So I can have different operators on looking after the cameras or looking after the media pool or looking after the audio. I could even add Hyperdex and have remote control over them, again, through that network connection. I can really upscale and you know grow my production as much as I need to. And if I don't need to, then of course, I can scale it all back down just to this device and still have all of that capability and flexibility within this small compact unit. So thank you very much for watching. Like I said at the beginning, if you've got any questions, do put them in the comments because I'll be actively checking and trying to get back to you all uh, because I know that there's quite a bit of noise around this at the moment. Of course, I'm one of the fortunate ones who has one so I can test it out for you and give you those answers hopefully. And if you've liked this video, of course, hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, that would be even better. And uh, I shall see you next time.